Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, NMPC Claire's air on gas supply to power generating companies says the corporation is supplying enough to generate up to 3,056 megawatts of electricity daily. Prominent Nigerians make appeal for unity on the score the gains of living together in one country. United Nations bodies and other concerned civil rights groups promote child rights, also mount pressure to end violence against women. The Democratic Unionist Party has agreed in principle to support a conservative government. And in business news tonight, Nigeria's May inflation rate projected to fall on base effects from 17.24% in April to 16.13%. And on sports news tonight, South Africa's Bafana Bafana records its first competitive win over the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We we'll begin tonight with efforts by the government to increase power generation in the country. According to a report released by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC, today, the current gas supply by the NNPC to the generating companies, the Jenkos, can produce up to 3,056 megawatts of electricity daily. The latest monthly reports on the finances and the corporation and the operations of the NNPC puts the average national daily gas production for the period at 226.918 billion cubic feet, which translates to over 7.319 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. It also puts the daily average national gas supply to gas power plants at 689 million standard cubic feet of gas per day, or an equivalent of power generation of 3,056 megawatts. This latest figures is an improvement on the previous month's record which stood at 582 MSCFD. The supply is also over 29% higher than the corresponding supply record for the last year. The recent explanation by the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kajiko, that the federal government has no plans to sell the nation's refineries seems not to have been bought by some groups in the Niger Delta area. It's under the aegis of Pan Niger Delta Youth Leadership Forum have taken to the streets of Port Hackett, the River State capital, to protest what they say is a secret plan by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to sell the refineries in Port Hackett and Wari. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Ray, reports. In what turns out to be a long walk, these placards carrying Niger Delta youths and their leaders begin a march from Isaac Borough Park through the popular bar road in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. The inscriptions on their placards say it all. They are grieved over what they describe as a grand design by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to sell or hand over the Port Harcourt and Wari refineries to friends and cronies. A move, they allege, will destabilize the relative peace in the Niger Delta region. Bad plans secretly to concession Port Harcourt refinery and Wari refinery. Hmm? With that, with that, without the involvement of the Niger Delta people. And we are saying that we want peace in this region. We have brought peace to this region now. The one that just happened, we have brought peace. But in bringing peace, they should not insult us by trying to sell the only assets that is left for us. The protesters take their grievances to the Port Harcourt General Office of the Department of Petroleum Resources to send what they say is a strong worded protest letter to the Ministry of Petroleum. We are going to take up this. Exactly, we we'll try to use even the words you have used to convey this matter to the higher authority. We hope that um, the response will also come to us either through this media or some other form. Although the federal government has insisted over time that the nation's refineries are not for sale, with some of them managing to work below installed capacity and in other cases far less, some have advocated a comprehensive engagement of all stakeholders on the way forward to improve the nation's refining capacity. Emmanuel Irey, Channels Television News. 
Prominent Nigerians have been calling on all ethnic nationalities to stop hate speeches in order not to compromise the unity of the country. The Oni of Ife Obadeye Ogunsi, Ojaji II, and the former Senate President, Mr. Kenan Amani, are among those who believe that Nigeria's greatness is made possible by its size. The reason why this country is as great as it is, is because of its diversity. It is because we have here people of every race, people of every tribe, bringing in their different cultures, their different strengths, all of the different things that make each one of our ethnic groups great comes together in one country. The acting president during his visit to Cross River State, making a clear appeal to all to respect the unity of the country. With the Arewa Youth Forum now issuing an ultimatum to Igbos to leave the northern states, another challenge of keeping peace in the northern region appears to be facing the security operatives. But the Inspector General of Police has warned those behind this call to have a rethink as he ordered his men to arrest them. I want all of us to be alert that anybody or any group, individual or group, that attempt to prevent any Nigerian, you know, from carrying out his daily activities, we have responsibility to ensure those guys are stopped by all means. Oni of Ife, who is in Ilorin at this time, is joined by the governor of the state to call for peace and national unity. The strength of Nigeria is in its diversity, and we must tap into that and use it to move to those levels of developed countries. Our unity is non-negotiable. Even if they are grieved, we should look at why they are grieved. But what's the essence of us breaking? Our togetherness is far better than our disintegration. The former Senate President, Ken Namani, at an event in Oka, Anambra State, also maintains the same position. The young guys from the north that are issued ultimately to the subsistence, many of them, if not all of them, they have not seen war. They did not participate in the last exercise. And any person who participated in the last civil war in Nigeria will not preach for another war in Nigeria. Also, some words of caution from another prominent Nigerian and former national chairman of ABGA, Chief Victor Ume. The other purportedly met that they both should leave the northern part of the country, emanating from the youths, should be discountenanced. Those youths did not witness the civil war, they did not um, witness things that led to the civil war and at this time youths should be thinking about how to secure their future. The northern governors have roundly condemned this threat from the Arewa group and so also the Senate and the federal government. Another video of the insurgent group Boko Haram has been released today by the leader of the group of Obukar Shiko, where he claims responsibility for the attack at a military post in Maiduguri. The insurgent suppression was carried out before advancing into the Dari community on Wednesday evening. The over 20 minute video shows Shiko displaying ammunition and camouflage allegedly seized from the fleeing soldiers. He claims that the military wrongfully once went after him and his men in Zambisa forest were asked. They were somewhere within Meduguri. Shiko further reiterated that the insurgents have not been defeated as claimed by the government. Lagos lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, is asking the federal government to re-strategize in its anti-corruption war by ensuring that the ongoing trials are done in relevant courts according to the crimes committed. Mr. Falano told our judiciary correspondent, Shola Shoele, that the case of retired Colonel Sambudasuki ought not to have been tried in a regular court, but a military court martial, especially because the case itself has to do with procurement of arms to fight terrorism. I cannot see a basis or any rationale, any legal basis, you know, in taking so 
serving and retires military officers to regular courts. If I had my way, the world be arraigned before courts martial and special courts martial because the allegations relate to the counter insurgency operations in the northeast region. So even if you are retired, there is an exception to that law that you can be brought to trial if the allegation against you has to do with war-related crimes. Secondly, the government should or ought to have taken advantage of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act to ensure that cases, corruption cases, are conducted almost day by day. And to do that, you have to appoint more judges, you have to equip those courts and make the conditions of the judges favorable, conducive to, you know, speedy trial of cases. The National Judicial Council, the NJC, has reacted to certain comments trading its recall of six judicial officers who had earlier been directed to recruit themselves from performing judicial duties pending the conclusion of investigation or determination of cases filed against them. Well, the NJC says that contrary to comments by Okoy Obonoobla, the Special Assistant to the President on Prosecution, the Registry of the High Court of the FCT Abuja informed its Department of Information that the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation filed two notices of appeal in the court against Justice Adini Ademola, his wife, Olabowali Ademola and Joagi San. The second one was filed on the 6th of June 2017, two days after the press release was issued by the National Judicial Council with additional grounds of appeal against only Justice Ademola. In the meantime, in a press statement by its Director of Information, Soji Oye, the CJN notes that the total number of 45 days allowed for compilation of records in all circumstances expired on the 7th of May 2017. For the Registrar of the Lower Court and uh, 22nd of May 2017 for the appellant, the Council says that it confirmed from the Registry of the Court of Appeal that there is no appeal against Justice Ademola's case till date. The NJC also says that it is aware that at the Code of Conduct Tribunal, the federal government filed suits against Justices Sylvester Ngucha and Iang Okoro of the Supreme Court and Justice Adeni Ademola of the Federal High Court. The three major ethnic groups in Benue State have threatened legal action against the leadership of the Fulani Herdsmen umbrella body if the federal government fails to prosecute them for inciting violence in the state. The Tiv, Idoma and Egede groups cited a statement credited to Mr. Saleh al Hassan on May the 31st, directing his group to resist the Open Grazing Prohibition Law 2017. Youth activists gather in Makhodi, the Benue state capital, to celebrate the country's democracy and to evaluate their role thus far. To set the ball rolling, the guest speaker is encouraging young Nigerians to engage the political class in fruitful concessions using their population as a bargaining chip. Out of two million, if you are one point five million, why are you contesting? We will bargain with them. The Senate, let's send all our fathers to the Senate. Leave the state for us. They can't go to the Senate without election in the state. So we say, if I support you with my muscle, if I support you with my agra to go to Senate, you will support me with your cash. Yeah. At the meeting to encourage the youth, the Speaker of the Benue State House of Assembly, who was first elected as a lawmaker at the age of 31 during the 2011 general elections. The Speaker shares useful tips on how young people can gain political advantage over time. In part two, after the break, coastal states begin to feel the flood forecast by Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NIMIT. Join us again.